lab guy here. What could possibly be better than a Cartravision television camera? How's about seven of them? Let's start the Cartravision camera-a-thon. In this part one video today, we're going to test all seven cameras using my Cartravision camera power supply and each individual camera which I have taken the trouble to put a number tag on each one of them so we can keep track of them individually. We'll plug them in and power them up as found and see which ones will make pictures uh, if they have any problems and if they have problems we will individually in other episodes troubleshoot them and repair them and align them. So I hope you folks enjoy this series. Today we're just going to test the cameras for operation. So I hope you enjoy that. Starting with camera number one and here's the number I put on it. Let's see if camera number one will operate. So we plug in our uh, six-pin DIN connector with our homemade cable into the power supply, which I've apparently left powered up overnight. <laughs> and we can see immediately on the monitor that something is happening. And there we go. Let's adjust the vertical hold. There we go. Camera number one makes a picture. What do you know? And this is not too shabby. We can zoom in and out. We can focus mostly, but we're currently too close to the objects to focus. So there you go. Camera number one makes a picture of moderate contrast and let's test the various features on the camera. There is a iris control for two fixed irises. This is a front view of the camera. This one has a uh, poor spring in the uh, cover so I had to tape the cover up so that it doesn't fall back down. And so this control is our iris control. So now looking at the monitor again we can have the outdoor setting and the indoor setting. Outdoor setting, indoor setting. This completes the test of camera number one. Moving on to camera number two. Pretty much intact. Front cover is closed, front cover is open. Front cover is closed, front cover is open. I have pistol grips for all seven cameras and we'll talk about those later. So, once again, we plug in our power connector on the side of the camera, on the connector here. And power up. Will it work? Will it not work? We got to give it time to warm up, folks. I see a few uh, digital leak through streaks in the video. What do you know? Okay, zoom does not work on this camera. There is something wrong with the lens. There we go, maybe now. Now it works. Okay, maybe it was dropped or the, or the lens is simply loose. Okay, zooming is still not working well. Focus is, well, Focus is what it is. Okay, so camera number two has a mechanical lens problem, but otherwise makes a picture. That's camera number two. Moving on to camera number three. It's intact, it's very clean. The shutter stays open. Let's power him up 
and see what happens, shall we? Aha! All right, picture stabilizing. We are testing all of the cameras with the monitor set at the same brightness and contrast level so that we can get a true comparison of each camera. So here we go. We can't focus very close. Zoom works. I swear these there there is differences between the cameras. They are different revisions. You'll note that there is some horizontal tearing at the top of this picture. So horizontal is off frequency or our phase lock loop is off frequency. I don't know which. So this camera has scan frequency problems. Note the bending of the vertical lines at the top of the picture. That's camera number three. Camera number three. And camera number four, number four, he's missing the aluminum decorative plate on the front. His eyelid works. The iris control appears to work. The lens is free. Let's plug him in and see what smokes, shall we? There we go. Oh, it's in there somewhere. There we go. We have action on the monitor. And we give it, give it a moment to warm up. The Viticon tube heater must warm up to make a beam. And I see something. Oh, we have a picture. Oh, but this one really zooms. Okay. We have fairly good focus at distance. I think there's uh, different zoom lenses involved here, or the tube scan sizes are different. We'll find out when we do the alignments. All right, we may or may not have a, another horizontal hold problem. We do. Okay, I'm not surprised. These capaci uh, these the capacitors in here are uh, what? <laughs> 50 years old? 40. 50 years old. These cameras were made in 1970. It is 2021, so that's 51 years ago. So, there you go. Camera number four. Here's camera number five. Ready to go. Let's open his eyelid. There's the lens. Stickers are intact on the side. He's clean. The iris feels like it's working. We'll talk about that when we open them up. If you service your own camera, you need to know about this little mechanism and you'll need to know about the VCR start-stop button. That's a very important mechanical feature of all things. So uh, let's hook this one up to power and see what happens. Well, we have action on the monitor. All right. Let's see if anything happens. Oh, look at that. We have a picture. Another blurry picture. Maybe the tube is out of focus. Yeah, there's a pile of, vid of uh, card revision cameras occurring on my bench. What the heck? Okay, so uh, looking around, we can see an image. So that is five out of five so far. Talk about high quality uh, construction and design from the 1970s. These are very likely to operate when you get them. So far, five of seven cameras we've tested have made an image of some sort right out of the box. Next camera, please. Camera number six. Are you ready? The iris switch feels right. 
the lens is free to move focus ring moves the eyelid was already open and pushy button thing on top pushy buttons okay more juice please all right watch your monitors carefully for action <laughs> well will this one make a picture I don't know I'll be surprised six out of six is it too good to hope for <laughs> six out of six Wow a little soft on the focus not enough range let's see if I shoot something farther away will it come into focus uh, I don't know okay oh open the iris up there we go all right we got the iris opened up which does not help focus but we're kind of close okay well that's pretty grayed out okay that's uh, camera number six camera number six making pictures camera number seven notice there's no pistol grip I have the pistol grip what I'm missing is the special screw that goes in the tripod hole if you have one of those please send it to me camera number seven number seven bad we're not in 3d okay camera number seven let's power him up and see what happens watch your monitor carefully nothing I do believe that this might be our first dead camera okay camera number seven is not doing anything there is no signal coming out. Nope, no signal at all. All right, camera number seven, dead as a doornail. Dang. Okay. So be it. So we just tested seven CartraVision cameras manufactured sometime between 1970 and 1972. Those cameras are 50 years old. So we've gone through the uh, seven cameras that I've accumulated over the past 20 years and surprisingly six out of seven of the cameras operate immediately. So this is the Carter Vision Camera-thon and we're just beginning. So welcome to all the new subscribers. Uh, greetings to all of my old subscribers. Hang in there everyone who's been enjoying the Dissector Cam project. We will get back to that eventually, but uh, I am personally kind of tired of it right now. And uh, I have to uh, grind my gears about what I'm gonna do next. And uh, we'll get back to that as soon as possible. You know what to do. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have a friend who likes uh, this kind of content, let them know about the channel. Share, share this channel with your friends and let's see if we can uh, bring in a, an audience and, uh, so that I can welcome them. You guys all rock because you watch this channel. You didn't know that made you important, but it does. You are important to me because without you, I'd have no incentive to do this work. So, until the next episode, stay tuned and Lab Guy out.